To probe your work, you're gonna need the work probe, so call it up. Close the door and press MDI T31 ATC forward. As you push those buttons, look for T31 to show up on the input line. When you push ATC forward, look for the tool change icon to show up during the time the machine is performing the tool change. And in the machine itself, look for lots of room for the tool change arm to swing around 180 degrees, depositing the work probe into the spindle. Then hit the offset button and hit the up arrow to come all the way up to the top of the offsets page, up into the tabs, so that you can get over to the work offsets. Then come down to your personal work coordinate system, your personal work offsets. If you don't have these yet, ask how to get them. If you don't know what they are, you're at risk of overwriting somebody else's work coordinate system. Here my personal work coordinates are G154P80. Yours are going to be different. Mine give me an X, Y, and a Z field, and I've got numbers in there already, and I want to zero those out so that it becomes crystal clear that when I probe my work, that the number that shows up is the one that I care about today. Zeroing them out is as simple as highlighting the field, the X value, typing zero, and then pressing the F1 key. When you do this, you're going to see a warning. Setting 142 is warning you that you are about to make a big change, a big numeric change. And yes, we're going from more than negative 10 inches suddenly to zero. That's a huge change in the eyes of the mill, and so you're getting a reminder that you're making a big change. Yes, we are. We're simply zeroing these out so that we have a clean start, a place to store our coordinates. So hit the Y key to answer the mill's question, are you comfortable proceeding? You're saying, yes, I am comfortable with my big numerical change. Same for Y. Press 0 and then F1 and Z. 0 and F1. And yes, I recorded this video backwards on accident and did Z, Y, and then X. Either way, you want all zeros in all three. Now open the door and handle jog the vise until it is in front of the door so that it's easier to see and easier to reach. We talk about the vise, which is everything here, but we're really talking about many different parts. The vise has a back. The vise has a front. The back of the vise has a back jaw. The front of the vise has a front jaw. The back vise jaw is the one we want to probe. Why? Because the front of the vise moves. It's less reliable. It has to have some play in the system. See me rattling it around? Without that play, it couldn't move. But that play also makes it an unreliable probing source. Just grab onto the back of the vise and you'll find it significantly more rigid, which is why we want to probe the back jaw of the vise. Now carefully and slowly handle jog your work probe down so that it's closer to the vise, off the left hand side, and then down low enough that the ruby tip, the aluminum oxide sphere at the end of the probe stylus, is positioned such that it can touch the left hand side of the jaw on X. Then find the edit button on the controller and push it, and hit the up arrow to come up to the tabs and over to VPS, the visual probing system. Arrow down to probing, and arrow right into probing, then come down to work offsets and arrow right into those. Come down to single surface, number 11, and arrow right into there. Enter your personal work coordinate system. Mine is 154.80, yours is going to be different. Select an axis. We're going to probe the X axis, so type X and hit enter, and then choose a search range and a direction. I'm on the left-hand side of the vise, so I want to search in the positive direction as I look for the metal of the jaw of the vise to tap up against. And how far should we search? Well, we were careful handle jogging the probe close to our metal, and so we're only ever going to search a quarter of an inch at most. Positive or negative, a quarter of an inch, 0.25. With all those settings in place, press the green cycle start button and hover your thumb over the red feed hold button. And if anything makes you uncomfortable about the movement in the machine, just push the feed hold button. I encourage lots of pushing of the feed hold button. It gives you a moment to think, and you can always resume what you were up to by just hitting cycle start again. 
On the controller, you'll see lots of G-code whizzing by, but don't worry about that. Focus on the machine itself. Rather, look at the probe itself. Notice the green light that flashes as it comes to life. Then notice the aggressive tap against the jaw, followed up by the fine tap. Congrats, you've now probed your x-coordinate. You should see an x-value very similar to my x-value, as the vise should stay put on the table. If yours is different by some significant amount, start a conversation so that we can figure out why. And if you're unsure how much of a difference is considered significant, start that conversation too so that we can start agreeing on how big big really is. Now repeat the procedure for Y and Z. And for Y, you're really going to need to lean into the mill as you handle jog the probe so that you can make sure you're not crashing into the vise and to be able to see that the ruby tip is about a quarter of an inch away from that front face of the jaw. One more time for Z, and you should have all three values necessary to run your fusion code, X, Y, and Z. And as tempting as it might be to walk away at this point, don't walk away just yet. Handle jog your probe up, 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 away from the vise. Don't leave the mill in a state where the probe is lurking down near all our physical components like a well-laid trap for the next poor soul who steps up to the machine. Take that probe away from all the danger zones when you're finished probing. And then do it one better and put it back into the tool changer. The simplest way you can do that is MDI T1 ATC forward. The probe is safest when it's tucked away up inside the tool changer, out of view.